Hey, welcome. You've arrived at the process. My name is Dr. John Bush. This is Lesson 52. We're continuing our team focus, Houston and Indianapolis. We're trying to help you win your fantasy football drafts, and this is part of my video textbook, and these are in the form of lessons. I am a biology professor at a university and uh, you know this is how I do things so welcome let's continue our journey here uh, this is a table and uh, we uh, have shown this before in the previous uh, lessons on the teams but please go back and start at the beginning but this is the AFC uh, South AS Conference team is Houston quarterback, running back, tight end, and, and wide receiver positions uh, for 2016 to 2020. These are fantasy point averages, and the circles in blue represent the five year top, and at the end is a grand total. And it just lets us, uh, the grand total lets us look and see what positions have been strongly used and favored by the team historically. And we can see that would be uh, quarterback and wide receiver. So that means that running back and tight ends have not traditionally been used well. And so that's something to think about in your uh, 2021 uh, drafts. Uh, so uh, the quarterback uh, top last year 2020 was 44,200. I'm sorry, 4,029. Excellent, excellent. The issue this year, of course, uh, the controversy with uh, Watson and some of the legal off field issues won't get into all that. Just uh, there seems to be some doubt or uncertainty about what's going on. So uh, I'm just showing you the data as is. Uh, you know, you have to make uh, decisions based on your handling of uncertainty. But right now, if Watson plays, he certainly is a strong quarterback candidate here given the production last year. Uh, running backs are not the, the best and historically have not been the best for this team. Uh, 2020 was a slight decline and was actually the 2020 was uh, pretty near the five year low, which was 2018. And notice the the variation hasn't been too big, so it's kind of like you're getting around 300, 310 uh, fantasy points. So there's, I don't know what the upside is right now, uh, regardless of any movements and things in the off season. That's, I think it's just kind of you draft. Uh, running backs there just for steady kind of production. Uh, redraft, it's not kind of where I'm going my first shot, but uh, certainly best ball and things. You could eke out some value there. Tight end, tight end pretty much uh, the other in since 2017 to 20 has been really, really poor. 2016 was the golden era of the tight end in the last four years with 266. Uh, pretty much not looking at tight end ones or twos, uh, maybe a streaming option, uh, you know, moving elsewhere. Okay. Wide receivers, uh, not too bad in 2020. Uh, it was the second, uh, uh, in the last five years, second, uh, year. So not too bad. I think they're given the quarterback situation, and I hope that uh, we have clarity on that, but assuming uh, we get uh, Watson back, then I think uh, 
there is some bargains there. I think Cooks is a bargain and maybe others there. So just kind of keep your eyes open. There may be some opportunities there in your drafts. Okay, so the next is uh, just a visual view of the data. I like to visualize it in my uh, head just as I'm thinking about uh, uncertainty levels and, and strategy here. So we look at the quarterback. It's pretty steady. I mean, we did have a nice uptick, but pretty steady. Running backs, uh, pretty much uh, you get what you get. Nothing dramatic up or down. Very steady. Uh, tight ends, uh, uh, you know, have not really produced like 2016. So I think we've talked about that. Wide receivers, I think you've got an opportunity to collect, and that's probably tied into the quarterback. So if Watson's there, I think there are opportunities. If he's not, uh, I think that adds uncertainty. But right now, I am seeking uh, wide receivers from Houston and uh, taking a chance that the uh, quarterback will, uh, uh, you know, not, will be Watson. But, you know, it's a gamble. Uh, Five-year pr uh, uh, production for uh, positional usage, five years quarterback, wide receivers uh, over 40%, which is kind of that number here. So you kind of skewed to the high passing side with the quarterback. Makes sense. Uh, 2020, that tendency is continued and really the tight ends didn't change to running back did go down a little bit and the quarterback and uh, wide receivers went up slightly. So there was a bias a little bit away from the rushing game to more of the passing game. So just uh, keep that in the back of your mind. Here's uh, kind of uh, the PPR ADP kind of uh, in the end of May here, that's when I'm doing this, so this may be a little out of date, but assuming Watson is okay, he's going the sixth round, seems reasonable. Uh, I think if the legal troubles go away, it's uh, the best you'll get would be what you're getting now. I think if the legal troubles go away, he, uh, he'll increase in value. So if you're if you're really sold on his talent and you think, you know, you uh, bargain and certainly in, in, you know, anybody like in Dynasty, they're worried or anything, there may be an opportunity to roll the dice and collect something. I just don't know. The running backs, uh, Lindsey and Ingram, have joined from two different teams. Uh, and Johnson is the favored so he's thought to be the one. Uh, Lindsey is the pass catcher, third down. Ingram is the running back three, maybe. So uh, I'm, I think uh, the six round seems about right. I, these numbers are not like, wow, there's a bargain. Uh, you know, I think if Watson stays, I think uh, some of these numbers may go up a little bit. But remember, over the last five years, uh, not a lot has changed with the rushing game. I think for best ball, I'm picking up Ingram, I think, almost free. So I'm picking him up late. And uh, maybe is a wide receiver, I'm sorry, running back four, maybe pick up Johnson, maybe a running back six, Lindsey, if you can get those, then those seem fine. I don't think you're going to collect a lot of draft capital efficient in this pond here. Maybe Ingram, I mean, if you're if you're getting for free, then I guess anything you get is is draft capital. 
Cook seems to be a little low. If Watson's there, I believe the eighth round is uh, a nice price, actually, and I am able to collect him in best ball right now and will continue. Uh, Nico Collins, I think may be overvalued. Uh, you know, obviously may be wrong, uh, but uh, public maybe they're not thinking so straight in May not picking him up at 10th round, okay, just not do it. Kuti would be some some person I would try to pick up for free in best ball. But other than Cooks, I'm not interested in fishing here uh, in it, with any of the other two. And Cooks is kind of my one shot in best ball redraft. Uh, you know, I'll probably, for me, I start playing redraft, uh, drafting June-ish. So I'm still a few weeks away. So we'll wait and see if I hear anything. But right now, I think Cooks could be a nice wide receiver four, five grab in redraft. I think people are going to be looking elsewhere. And I think any bargain you get will be now. Okay, so if you're sold on Cooks, you think eighth round is a great price. Uh, I don't know if it's a great price for me, but it's 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 a fair price and maybe a little bit of uh, bargain there. I think if Watson's legal troubles goes away, I think he I think they both move up around. So uh, there's a little bit of uh, bargain to be had there. Uh, here's just the uh, view of the five-year versus 2020 in comparison. The blue bars are five-year, the red bars are 2020, and the triangles are the difference. And anything above the purple bar here is positive. Anything below is negative. So we have the running backs and tight ends negative, quarterbacks, wide receivers, positive. And I think that's just emphasizing the team's five-year approach to their, their game. And I don't think there's anything surprising here by this at all. Uh, kind of ho-hum, I guess, kind of anticlimactic if you're thinking. The only thing that's going to shake it up is a new quarterback. If that's the case, uh, not sure how all this is going to play. Just don't know. That could be really, really interesting. Okay, let's move on. I think we've arrived at Indianapolis. So, uh, uh, AFC South, uh, positions 16 through 20. Uh, looking overall, what stands out is the wide receivers and the running backs tended to be uh, the bias of this team. I think pass catching running backs have done well there. And uh, I think in 2020, the year of uh, COVID, I think that was the running backs really were highly relied on here. If you look at the golden era for this team, 2018, uh, all the tops here. Uh, so I think my feeling, if you look at the quarterback, we've got issues there. Uh, the, right, the running backs, I think there's some bargains and things I think I will be drafting there in best ball. Tight ends, there may be too many to pick one. I guess with, with injuries or something, there may be a tight end two in there. And maybe in a best ball, I might fish around because Indianapolis has used tight ends in the past. Wide receivers, uh you know, kind of an average year, so I don't, I don't, I don't think you're going to lose anything fishing, but I'm not sure there's bargains there until the 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 whole gelling of this team. I think there's a lot of flux here, and so I'm not sure what that means yet. So I think it's, it wouldn't surprise me that Indianapolis starts out slow but comes together later in the year. So. 
if you get any bargains, you may not see them until later. So think about that for trade purposes and whatnot. And I haven't done schedule yet, but if Indianapolis has a nice later schedule, then you might, might get some advantage there. Just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. That's just my overall feeling of this. Let's take a look at the visual. The quarterback was certainly a down year from the last. Uh, this may be a giraffe, as I call it, sticking up above the fray. And maybe we see a regression. And I'm going to put a question mark here. Everybody likes to use the word regression. Not sure people really understand the full statistical understanding of uh, regression to the mean and whatnot, but everybody likes to uh, flap chops about that. The more buzzwords you can use, uh, you know, the sharper you look in the podcast and whatnot. So I don't know. Uh, right now, I'm not convince one way or the other uh, and by the way uh, I'm not afraid not to take a stand a lot of people well we got to take a stand no, you don't have to you can kind of uh, you know let things play out a little bit I understand that uh, you know you may miss out on some draft capital but hey you know uh, you play as you play here Tight ends were bleh, not really too impressed here. Uh, wide receivers seems about average. And so uh, not, I think uh, early on, what I'm seeing here won't surprise me, a reliance on the running backs more. And... Uh, Maybe the passing game opens up. And so positional usage, uh, running backs were the story in 2020. Maybe it's COVID, but needless to say, we've had some a quarterback change. Uh, so we now have Carson Wentz in Indianapolis. Uh, people think, well, maybe that's good. Uh, he's a 12th round quarterback, so almost a quarterback two type, certainly deep one, not rushing to get him, maybe in best ball, he's my quarterback two or three, uh, not jumping. Taylor is getting the spotlight. Uh, you know, my feeling is he may be overpriced and there's no bargains there. I guess if I've got to take a wide receiver, uh, running back and Kelsey's gone at six, uh, I will probably go to Elliott, but, you know, and not take Taylor. I'm not sure how much Taylor. Uh, Nakeem Hines, I am taking. I do believe round eight is a bargain. And I'm getting Marlon Mack nearly for free in best ball. So I'm really hitting hard on those two. Uh, is my wide uh, running back three, four, five, six types. Uh, tight end, I'm not sure where to go. I'm kind of blah. And so I didn't even mark, mark it. I'll just keep my uh, eyes open. So, Pittman is going before Hilton. Really? Uh, I think Hilton's a little bit of a bargain. So, I'm going to just... And Paris Campbell's 14. Boy, uh, I'm only taking Hilton in best ball. I will let others take Pittman and Campbell, and I definitely wouldn't reach for any of them until we see how Wentz gels. Uh, but I think Hilton would be a solid wide receiver three, and in best ball, 
you know, if I can get him that, then I'll take him. I'm passing on Pittman and Campbell right now. Maybe I'm wrong and everybody's right. Great. Uh, uh, but that's kind of where I'm at at that point. Uh, let's see what else to say. Tight ends. Uh, the only thing about just circling back to the tight end, uh, I would just keep my eyes open for a streaming tight end coming out of Indianapolis. Especially early on, Wentz may rely on tight ends more than people think. Or Nakeem Hines may actually get a play. So, if Indianapolis comes out and they're still trying to find their game and Wentz is conservative and uses tight ends and like Hines more for pass catching on uh, redraft, you might want to uh, sell Hines, trade at a high value. I think that things could gel in some of these wide receivers. Maybe Pittman does wake up later, or Hilton is better than people think, comes back. Uh, maybe an unknown, you know, wide receiver in there. I don't know. So you might just kind of think about that a little bit, let that gel. And I think in 2020, the story was Taylor and the running backs. I'm just not sure where Marlon Mack fits versus Taylor. I do like Hines as a best ball uh, three or four, certainly a three. And everybody else was uh, declined. So, But then again, they got a new quarterback. I don't know. I'm more skeptical than than not about this whole team. I think they could wake up later. I think coming out of the gate, it's going to be shaky. So that's kind of my, this is me reading the tea leaves here. Okay, that's my 10 cent tour of this whole, uh, these whole two teams. Lots of moving parts and uncertainty, but, uh, that's usually how we are at this time of the preseason. Okay, come back. The process moves on.